I have spoken out a lot about deliverance ministries, and I want to make sure that people understand what true authentic deliverance looks like. There is a such thing as deliverance by God, but I think what's happened of late is people have gotten the wrong understanding of what it means to be delivered. What did Jesus come for? When we look at the Bible and we look up the word deliverance in the Hebrew, one of the words that's used is the word Yeshua, where we also hear the word Yeshua, the name of Jesus in Hebrew. Also in Greek, when we see the term deliverance in the New Testament, the Greek word for deliverance is the Greek word for soterion, which is salvation, to be saved. And so to understand what deliverance ultimately is, where it comes from, what it encompasses, it is all centered around the person of Jesus and him in your life. In Luke 4, 18, Jesus gives this quote where he says, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he's anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim the release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to set free those who are oppressed. And he says to proclaim the favorable year of the Lord. Jesus's ministry centered around him setting people free, delivering them. But it was not just in really one capacity. He came to set us free totally. Jesus says, so if the son has set you free, then you are free indeed. And the word for indeed in the Greek is the word antos, which means thoroughly, is continually being actually so, indeed, truly. And so if you are free, then you are free indeed, without anything lacking. For anyone to say otherwise would be to make a mockery of what Jesus said. You cannot be declared free indeed and then still be bound by some sort of demonic activity. Does that mean that there is no demonic activity that may not come your way? That's not what that means at all. Peter says that Satan goes about like a lion seeking whom he may devour. That is also us. He has designs on us. But the truth is, he will not succeed. How do I know? Because John says a couple of things. One, greater is he that is in me, that is the Holy Spirit, than he that's in the world. Notice he's in the world. But then John also goes on to say in chapter five, two things. He says that we who are born of God are overcomers. This is what we do. And this is the present active participle, meaning this is what we continually do. We are in a state of overcoming. Overcoming does not mean that you are free from problems. Overcoming means that you overcome all of the problems, including those that come about as a result of demonic activity. He also speaks of us overcomers, those of us who've been born of God. He says that the evil one, the devil, the enemy cannot touch us. Therefore, it should be clear that there is nothing that we have to worry about or to fear. Do not let people tell you that you can be bound or enslaved. There are those that even want to play semantical games with the word in the Greek that gives us this term for possession. The word daimonixomai means to be oppressed, to be possessed, to be demon possessed. What it refers to is a person having a demon, being afflicted by a demon, tormented by a demon. In other words, a demon has decided to bother this person. Sometimes it shows up physically. Sometimes it just shows up in them internally mentally and emotionally, which is why we have the term possessed. There is no difference in the Greek and you do not find any Greek lexicons or grammars that would state otherwise. Do not listen to people who say that there is a difference that will say that you cannot be possessed, but you can be demonized. You can be oppressed, not a Christian. Again, that would nullify us being overcomers. That would nullify John saying that he can touch us. That would nullify Jesus saying that we have been freed indeed. Now, someone's going to say, Corey, but it sounds like you are denying the power of God and also naively denying that there are demonic influences. Well, no, as a matter of fact, I lean heavily on the power of the Holy Spirit. See, it is my testimony personally of God's deliverance, how I was delivered even before I knew him. When I was born, drugs in my system almost died the night that I was born. And it didn't get that much better thereafter. My father sold drugs. My mother used drugs. We knew how to not only deliver drugs, seeing them cooking, cocaine, all these different things that we grew up, we thought it was normal. Moving from place to place to place to place. Someone asked me, how many times have you been shot at? You mean by strangers? Well, not counting my mother, twice. We have had an actual hit put out on us to where we had to move from one house to another part of the city, then ultimately 
moving out of town. Even after moving in with my father and going to high school, things seemed to be kind of turning around. But after that, I found myself being homeless, but God delivered me from that as well. I am in the faith. I'm growing in him. I'm learning. And then some of you also know of my own actions that caused me to go to prison wasn't some sort of demon. It was just my sinful self and then me yielding to that for the time being. But God was still there. And remember the promise that he is going to deliver me. I am still an overcomer. And so the fact that I'm sitting before you today, even speaking, when my prison out date is 2025, I've been out since 2020. And so do I believe that God delivers? Without question, God delivers. Do I believe that God sets free? Yes, free indeed. Spiritually, emotionally, as a matter of fact, even literally. Again, I am not behind bars. I have seen the worst of the worst as well as the best of the best. God is who he says he is, and I did not need someone to lay their hand on me to tell me or to tell some demon to come out in the name of Jesus. No, by simply placing your faith in Christ, you will be delivered. Do not let someone tell you that the power of God is limited, that he cannot deliver you by you having your faith in him and the Holy Spirit in you is not powerful enough, but it takes some other man to deliver you. That is blasphemy, my friends. But the beauty of the power of the Lord in us is that we have been set free. And I would say to anyone who is struggling, who's going through, there are going to be some issues. There are going to be problems. There's going to be struggles. There's going to be persecutions. Don't believe me? Ask Peter. Ask Paul. Ask John. Ask Jesus. There are always going to be some struggle for those of us who are in Christ. He says, those of us who are in Christ shall suffer persecution. That part is to be expected. But if you want to find out what true deliverance comes from ultimately and how you get past or how you overcome some of the temporary things that bother us, or as Paul says, these light and momentary afflictions, Paul says in Galatians, do not get weary in well-doing. Keep doing the right things. Keep praying. Keep studying. Keep fellowshiping. Keep praising and worshiping God. Because he says in due season, at the right time, at the appointed time, he says that you shall reap your reward. And so when someone wants to show me what true deliverance looks like, I don't need you to show me some example of someone acting, someone pretending. As a matter of fact, bad acting. I don't need to see someone saying, get out, get out, get out 20, 30 times before nothing actually ever happens. I don't need to see a carnival show. If I, if I want to see true deliverance, do you know what I do? I simply look in the mirror.